be back. We're back on Facebook Live, and we're back here. You didn't miss anything on Facebook Live. It was just a commercial break, and I decided to disconnect you to save on bandwidth because it's going to be close. We, we, we might just squeeze under the gigabyte if we do this effectively. Uh, of course, I could lower the quality of your video and get to you that way, but I don't know. All right, let's. We're going to take a, call, a phone call quickly, and then um, and then we're going to go on. Hi, this is your on book show. Who's this? Hey, Skylar, how's it going? Good, good. What's up? Ask two quick ones. All right, great. I'm going to take you offline, and I'm going to answer both your questions. Uh, let me start with the queen, because uh, that's an easy one, and it, it, it's not really related to the topic today. So let's get that out of the way. I don't have any respect for royalty. None. Zero. Zilch. Um, you know, I've heard that Ayn Rand might have had uh, something about... I really don't have any. I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get why anybody would respect a monarch. I don't get what's interesting about a monarch. I, I, I don't get what's cool about being a monarch. I think it's pretty ridiculous. I, so I don't get the whole thing. It's like it, zero, nothing. Um, I, I believe very much that the monarchy represents all men are not created equal. All men are not equal. E equality before the law, I mean, equality of rights. They, they, they are above us. And, and so I, I've never liked aristocracy, and I've never liked, and I know Ayn Rand has a certain romantic view of aristocracy, uh, literarily at least, uh, as, as portrayed in her, in, um, in her novels. I get what she's getting at. I get that, that sense of nobility. And, but with aristocracy, historically, I, I don't know that it was earned. Um, and uh, with uh, particularly with queens and kings. All right, so the other question is is relevant to our discussion. So Ty, uh, Skyler wants to know, would it be proper for ARI to create its own news service, to become a news organization, to provide news? Or, uh, and, and maybe maybe what you really mean is to filter the news, to, get, to go out there and to filter the news and to provide a service of providing news what we believe is objective and accurate news, because it's two different things. To be a real news service, one would have to have reporters, uh, one would have to have people out there going out for stories and, and going and doing investigative reporting, but also going out and, and, uh, and being in the places where the news is happening and uh, asking questions and doing interviews and actually engaging it. There's a whole, it's a whole profession. Journalism is an entire profession. And uh, it, it's not, it's not a trivial profession. So, and I don't think that would be appropriate. I don't think that would be appropriate for um, for the Ayn Rand Institute to do. We are not a news organization, and we're not going to hire journalists. And uh, what's a comparative advantage other than a good epistemology? But then you'd have to find a bunch of people with good epistemology. I mean, so one of you should do it, right? One of you should start the objective newsroom or the objective newspaper. And uh, it's a great name, right, for a newspaper. And go out there and, and deliver the news. And remember, the news is the news. It's not opinion. It's not slanted. It's what's happening in the, in, in, in the world right now. Good guys, bad guys, things that are going on that you think are important. Now, the filtering of what you think is important is a lot of what a news organization does and a lot of what's important about a news organization. But no, I don't think that's appropriate. And in terms of filtering the news, again, I just don't think that's what the Institute is about. The Institute is about philosophy. Um, it's about commentary on the news. It's not about providing you with news. So um, I do think there is room for a um, an objectivist uh, who knows what they're doing. Uh, that's really important. To... 
uh, you know, maybe in a blog or something like that to create a website like Drudge or something, right, that, that filters uh, the news, that provides a source that people can go to where they have a certain level of trust and confidence in what they are reading. And, and I think that would be a great value because most people don't have the time to filter through what is true and what is false. But then more than that, it's, it's what is slanted and how it's slanted. Maybe this person who put the, this website together could actually give a little commentary on each piece. Not, not, not a, an analysis, but a little commentary. This is from a leftist news source. You know, it's, it's a little slanted, but there's some really interesting things here. It's worth reading. Or this is from a right-wing source. So this is, uh, this is, you know, give a little bit of just, just orientation. But uh, it would filter for both truth and and you know, in a, in a certain level of bias, and or or, or filter against that level of bias, that is, uh, and warn people about the bias in a particular piece and, and where it's coming from, and teach people to be good consumers of news, which I think people, I used to think they were pretty good at, but it's turned out they're not very good at at all. Uh, so that would be interesting. I mean, that would be interesting for somebody to do. Uh, it would have to be like a news junkie. You could probably make money doing it. You could sell advertising. You could sell subscriptions. There's a number of different things, a uh, number of different things that uh, that you could do about that. And I'm not talking about some way that analyzes it philosophically or chats about it. I'm just talking about a, a news website that gives quick things and, and that does it on all the news and it does it every day in, a, in an intensive way. I don't think there is such a thing. Certainly nothing like this run by an objectivist. Uh, think drudge with a little bit of commentary. Um, I, I actually think that would be, I mean, an objective drudge, right? I, I don't think drudge is objective at all. But um, that would be that would be really interesting, and I think that would be really valuable. And uh, somebody somebody should actually do it. And I actually know some people who might be willing to put money into it. If if you if you would like to do it, and you'd like to meet some moneyed people, uh, maybe this could be a good startup to to do. And maybe there's some clever technology you can use to to make it uh, particularly effective. But I really think that is a real service that one can provide, not just objectivists, but generally for people out there who are looking for a more objective view of the news, for somebody to filter the news, somebody to filter the news uh, for you uh, that, 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 that takes out all the garbage in a sense of uh, in a sense of things that are news. I don't know the, the equivalent of cat videos that you know that, that sometimes the news organizations focus on, and um, and at the same time also filter out the stuff that's just not true, but also that's so so biased that that is uh, uh, that it can be done. So uh, that would be that would be a lot of work. You'd have to build a whole organization around it. This is not something you can do by yourself. This is a lot of work because you'd really have to you'd be putting your name out there. You'd be, you'd be, uh, and it's not just selecting a few pieces of news. This would be the news, which is dozens of, of items a day. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that would be terrific. I think that would be exciting. I think that would be, uh, that would be something really, really valuable. Not for your right to do. That's not our job. But for one of you, right? One of you. This is uh, you. Sh you know, you could apply for an objectivist uh, venture fund grant to do it. So there, there's money to be had. An objectivist venture fund grant. I could, you know, I'd support that if 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 you were somebody credible and, and and had the epistemological skill to be able to do the work. I don't think the work is 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 uh, is easy. Um, but again, I, I I don't I don't know that any of the newsletters or any of the the bulletin board type things or discussion groups really do this. It's just one thing. You just look at the news and you, you know, uh, show it, you link to the actual news, and you, you have a little bit of, of minor commentary about it. So all the power to you. Go, go, you know, somebody should go do this. All right. Um, let's take uh, one quick other call, and then I want to get to this uh, the topic of today. Hi, you're on the Yuan Book Show. Who's this? Hey, hello, Stuart. How's it going? Good.
Yep. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, so, so Stuart is talking about globalism versus Americanism. Okay, Stuart, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you off thing and I'm going to talk a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about this idea of globalism versus Americanism before I get to a discussion of more of the, of the media and false news and all of that. Because I, I started, I, I wanted to do this last time a couple of weeks ago and didn't really get an opportunity because I, I'm afraid I'm, I, I might miss out on it today as well if I don't handle it head on. So I always took globalism to mean kind of globalization, uh, the, the, the open, open trade, uh, uh, open immigration, open travel, but not, not open immigration necessarily, you know, uh, open borders. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, but just the, 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 the greater flow of people, the free flow of capital, the free flow of goods across the world, relative free trade, rel- you know, relative hospitality, uh, hospitality or something to immigrants and a free flow of capital and just a general sense that, hey, the world's a cool place, uh, traveling is good, going to see other cultures is good, doesn't mean all cultures are the same, Western civilization is superior, and indeed Western civilization is taking roots in places like Japan, to some extent certainly in China and in other countries, not perfectly, but then again it was never perfect in the West. So the idea that 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 uh, every individual in the world has individual rights, that uh, the sanctity of life is is true everywhere. That I don't, you shouldn't expect me to sacrifice somebody across the world. I don't sacrifice to my neighbor either. Don't expect sacrifice. Period. Uh, and don't expect me to respect uh, foreign culture as much as I respect the culture of of you know that, that is the foundation of the West. But at the same time, a curiosity about other cultures and an, and an interest in the virtues of other co- cultures when they have those virtues, and some cultures do have virtues, so a general openness to the world, a curiosity, an openness, an embracing of the world. That's how I always use, view globalism. Um, not in a multicultural sense of all countries or all cultures are the same. I've never never believed that, and, and I didn't think globalism referred to that. Um, but it turns out that the way, and, and I guess, I don't know if this is coming from the alt-right, and it, certainly the alt-right has embraced this, and has really pushed the idea that that's not what globalism is, Iran. Globalism is the idea of global governance, the idea of world government, the idea of inflicting on the entire world a certain leftist ideology, uh, a leftist ideology that's very multiculturalist, so globalism stands for multiculturalism and the equality of all cultures, or indeed the superiority of any culture other than the West. And that the West is the inferior, the colonizing, the, 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 the one that is, uh, uh, is evil. And um, so... The idea, so the idea of globalism is now morphed the way it's being used by, by people, even by Donald Trump. I think when he talks about globalism, or, or people around Donald Trump, or people on the right generally, it's it's now this idea that there's a vast conspiracy to subjugate the United States to global rule, and usually the global rule is going to be from the UN. And you know this is connected to Agenda Twenty One. Which is this environmentalist agenda, and and uh, that is trying to that, it, that is being pushed by the left, and it really is being pushed into local governments in the United States and and everywhere else. So there really is a, a, a problem, um, but is it a problem? So the idea is there's a conspiracy, and and this is articulated in places like Infowars. By the way, a, a despicable place. I mean, I don't know if you've ever gone to Infowars.com, but w- w- wow. Anybody who takes InfoWars seriously, anybody who consumes any kind of media from InfoWars, I mean, that's nutty, people. That is nutty. Those guys are crazy nuts. I mean, they think uh, 9-11 is a conspiracy. So, and, uh, so, I mean, that's just, it doesn't get any nuttier than that. Um, anyway, so globalism has taken on this, this, this uh, it's a package deal. And it's a package deal that, that has packaged together uh, the idea of free trade, the idea of free ca- movement of capital, the idea of, of more immigration or f- some freedom in immigration with the idea of global governance, 
with the idea that there's a conspiracy to take over the world, whether through the UN or some other entity, uh, it depends on the particular conspiracy you're involved in. Um, it's the idea that they are trying to impose their will on all uh, on government in the United States, that Hillary Clinton was part of this, and that's why it would have been the end of America if she had won. Uh, that So this is the package deal, right, of things that are really global, that are good, that are involved in what has been always called globalization, which, by the way, has resulted in massive exports of Western civilization to the rest of the world and a vast, fantastic improvement in their standard of living. Um, globalization, which is trade, immigration, and capital, uh, and, and free movement of people, tourism, the Berlin Wall coming down, uh, people being able to travel around the world without visas. I mean, all or, or with relatively easy to travel with visas, like, like a, a relatively easy to get a visa to China or even to Russia or places or Brazil or places like that for an American. That a legitimate form of globalization with the illegitimate world governance, world control, leftist ideology, crown, you know, statist, leftist, collectivist ideology crammed down our throats by a world government, which is obviously a bad thing. So am I for globalism or not for globalism? Well, I'm not for the package deal. I'm for all those things I mentioned that are positives and all those other things are insane. And of course, I'm not for, so when some people accuse me of being globalist, they're accusing me, I realize now, it took me a while, I'm slow, I'm slow, but I'm learning, you guys are teaching me, I'm learning slowly, that what they're really accusing me of is being a proponent of world government, which is insane, which is insane, but it's the package deal, and the package deal creates real, real uh, cognitive dissonance. It creates real difficulty in holding onto the truth. It's hard to tell. What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Right? So, you know, many of the racists talk about Jewish world government or other world government, but it, but the idea is that there's a conspiracy out there to take over the world. And look, this is the thing with some of these conspiracies. There are elements of truth in them, right? So there is no question that the left would like the UN to have a bigger role in governance in the United States. There's no question that there are people out there that would like it to, to the reins of the United States government to be taken away from people like George W. Bush, who they consider a warmonger, and given to the UN and have all the important decisions passed by the UN. There's no question that the, 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 the people would like uh, a, a, um, a coordination of all environmental policies across the entire globe, and that a lot of the trade deals have done that and, and are motivated by that, right? It's, it's not a major feature of them. It's not what's important about those trade deals, but it's part of them. Um, it's, uh, it, so it's true that there are intellectuals out there who believe that the, the states should be eliminated in favor of a, a big super state that is run purely democratically and that the United States need to redistribute all its wealth to the rest of the world because we exploited everybody else and that's how we became rich. All of that exists. All of those ideas are out there. That's not what those of us who believe in free trade believe in. And, and it's dishonest to claim it is. It, it, it's the other way around, but it, 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 that we do believe in it. But you see, so there needs to be a term f f for these conspiracy theory and these advocates for world governance, for global governance. But it's not globalism in the sense of free trade, right? It's not globalization. And many of those people, you know, don't believe in free trade between individuals. They don't believe in free trade at any level. You know, it's, it's, it's really, really, um, these are leftists who, who, uh, who, uh, who all they want is to constrain our freedom to constrain our ability to trade. So to lump them in with free traders is absurd and ridiculous and, and discredits anybody who makes these claims. So globalism is a, is, a, is a package deal. It means nothing. It's stupid. Uh, and it just, it's just meant to confuse. It's just meant to confuse. Free trade is good. Let me say that again. Free trade is good, unequivocally good unapologetically good. And what we have today in America is, is today we have the lowest tariffs we've ever had in American history. 
the closest we have ever had to free trade. This is a good thing. This is a wonderful thing. This is something to be celebrated. Not to be lumped in with some conspiracy theory nuts or, or lumped in with leftists who would like to have world government who don't care one iota about trade. You've got to separate the two things out. Gl a, 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 a global integration on an economic level is good. In that sense, the European project, the European Union, if it had stuck to no barriers, no barriers to goods, capital, or people, open immigration across all members of the European Union, free movement of capital all across the European Union, free goods, free movement of goods all across the European Union, if they'd stuck to that, and not try to establish European governance in a sense of common regulations and common currency and common a bunch of other things, it would have been a beautiful project. It would have been one of the greatest achievements ever. And indeed, to the extent that there is free movement of people, free movement of capital, free movement of goods in the European Union, the European Union is a success and has benefited everybody who's participated in it. To that extent. The danger comes from Brussels that wants to govern these countries. And, you know, if they wanted to govern it well, all right, that would be fine. But they want to govern it. The governance that they want to impose is a governance of, um, of, of, of statism, of socialism, of government intervention, of crushing uh, economic success. And, and that's why Brexit was good. I, I wish Brexit, the British, could keep the free trade of goods, labor, and people, and just eliminate the regulations and the governance that comes from uh, Brussels. But I, I, don't think, I don't think they can separate the two, unfortunately. Brussels won't let them, and I don't think they want to. They don't want real free trade. I wish they did. The world since World War II, the world, including the United States of America, has benefited enormously economically from free trade, including NAFTA and the, and, and the, the WTO and all these so-called conspiracy theories. And it, could NAFTA be better? Absolutely. We are now.